This is everything I think you need for this project. The Digibox controller, when you buy it, you get the controller, you get the USB cord to update firmware. The NEMA 23 you have to buy separately, but the controller does come with the connector, and that connector plugs right into the side of the box like this. Now separately you can order the hardware kit, which I would recommend you get the four bearings you get a 3 8 by uh, 16 thread T-nut. You also get the motor mounts to mount the Neiman 23. You get the bolt, you get the sleeve, and you get the T-nuts. This also comes with the Lovejoy connector to mount to the front of the Neiman 23 that controls everything. Separately, you would have to buy the power supply and I'll put a link in the description below for that. Even besides all that, you have to buy the 3 8 by 16 all thread. And mine is 36 inches. While I was at the store, I went ahead and bought uh, washers, fender washers, 3 8 nuts, and 3 8 lock nuts. Not sure if I'll need these at this time, but I bought them just in case. And one more thing you'll need is a carriage bolt. You need at least five inches long. And the knobs that go on the carriage bolts, just make sure that the bolt can go all the way through the knob. That is important later. So one of the first differences that I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna mount everything to my sled. And my sled is going to fit into my cabinet. First thing I needed to do is find out over here on the right hand side where I'm going to be putting that digi box and the stepper motor and all that stuff. So I determined six inches goes to waste for that all the way over here on the right hand side. So I marked off six inches. I marked a center line from that six inches to the end of the board and that's where my blade is going to go. So I've already glued in my runners. All I need to do now with the runners is to screw them down and make it permanent. Okay, this piece is one of the most important pieces of the jig. Uh, just like with any cross cut, this piece has to be 90 degrees of the blade. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure that the blade is 90 degrees to the sled or the table. And then, uh, then you can proceed to getting the fence 90 degrees to the blade. Do that however you want, but make sure that this is 90 degrees to the blade itself. When permanently mounting that fence, just make sure there's at least three inches from the back of the sled. Make sure that fence is three inches over and obviously 90 degrees. Now I'm cutting the uh, end blocks and the carriage blocks. You'll have four of these blocks that are the same width and two of them that are a little taller. Put some reference lines on two corners, that way I always know where to reference from. I drill pilot holes in all four of these just so I can get the holes to line up exactly right. These holes have to be perfect. Now in the end caps, the two smaller blocks, there's a uh, hole that goes all the way through for the bearings. And on one of the carriage pieces, just deep enough to fit the T-nut, and then it gets a through hole for the T-nut to sit in. The other carriage block gets a hole all the way through for the all thread. The T-nut will sit into that recess area and then get sandwiched in with the other piece of block. And these two blocks get screwed together. The bearings just pushed in. I did end up epoxying these bearings in, but it's not necessary. 
then these uh, you can see the end blocks gets pushed in to the corners this also gives support for the fence to keep it 90 degrees you want to make sure that this block is perfectly 90 degrees to the sled and the fence So now I'm mounting the motor, I'm just drilling a hole to fish some wires through and then I'm mounting the motor into that uh, right side end block. Now I just need to measure and cut the all thread to size. Now I'm ready to build the carriage itself. The carriage itself is pretty simple to build and it all comes together pretty self-explanatory. That piece I'm screwing in is that assembly that I built earlier. So you got the rear piece that has the T-nut inside it. You got a little piece that rides on top of this fence and then another piece on front and that surrounds the uh, fence itself. Now what I'm doing here is for the carriage I'm just drilling a uh, recess hole for the carriage bolts and then a through hole so the carriage bolt can go all the way through it. Now let's glue all this up together. I just used a drill to run the all thread all the way through the assembly and screwing it through the carriage and then all the way up to the motor, making sure I put the nuts in the appropriate positions. Now the all thread will actually go right into the Lovejoy connector of the that's on the stepper motor and then there's a set screw on that that you tighten the tighten down. Now you'll see that little blue piece of tape right there in between these two pieces. That's just to give a little bit of space between the uh, fence so this thing moves freely. And this gets fastened in with three screws. Now you can see what those uh, carriage bolts are for. This is the clamping mechanism that holds your workpiece while you're doing your work. Now the Digibox controller is very simple to use. You can hold down the zero button and the rewind button as you power up and then select the appropriate size that you want. To advance the jig while you're working you can either hit the advance button or if you hooked up the limit switch you can actually hit the limit switch as well. To reset back to the beginning just hit the rewind button it goes right back to where you started and this joint came out perfect here it is in one whole motion now what I'm doing is uh, actually just kind of playing around with the settings a little bit just to practice um, there is a uh, left and right advance and I was just playing with those just more or less see what it does but all said and done the joints came out very tight uh, dry I had to actually hammer them in and then uh, with the glue it actually went together a lot easier And here's the box all sanded up, glued together, 
and it came out great. All right, so I got the Digibox jig all set up, ready to go. It's all tweaked out, and uh, I think, for the most part, it is completely done. Um, one thing I do want to do, and I don't even have to do it, uh, I want to make these seven inch uh, carriage bolts a little shorter, because I thought you needed seven inch bolts there, but you really don't. You can get away with probably four, maybe five inches. Um, so the seven inches is just too long for me for what I'll do. Uh, the box joint itself turned out fabulous. Um, the joints are nice and tight. Um, they were extremely tight actually. Uh, but they did go in a lot easier with glue and I think that uh, made the big difference when you actually had glue in the joints and kind of put them together because it did go in a lot easier uh, putting them together dry they were really tight almost I did pound them in to uh, get them fit but the little cheap little box I'll, I uh, whipped out turned out pretty good um, I'm not going to finish it or anything like that this is more of a prototype I just put a scrap piece of plywood on the bottom and uh, you know rabbit it out the bottom but that turned out pretty good. I'll use that for something. Uh, extremely impressed with the design on the Digibox. Um, it's well thought out, it looks great, and it functions really well. A little bit of tweaking has to happen with the stepper motor and the all thread. You gotta make sure you have a extremely straight all thread and the bolts that go through the in, both end brackets here and over there, and then the carriage bracket. All those bolt holes has got to line up perfectly. Um, if they don't, your all thread's not going to uh, run right, and it's going to put extra strain on your stepper 23, or the NEMA 23. Um, other than that, I didn't have any problem with the Digibox. Uh, it pretty much came ready to go, ready to use, pre-programmed and everything. Uh, just a minor little learn, learning curve with it, but uh, it's really self-explanatory. It has all the instructions right on the front and, you know, 10, 15 minutes playing around with it, you'll figure it out. It's pretty easy. The um, thing uh, uh, up here, there's a limit switch. Um, I think I'm going to move that limit switch up here where my hand will go to move the uh, carriage. That limit switch does the exact same thing as the advance button on the box. Um, it, it's totally not necessary. You don't have to have it. You can just hit the advance button on the box and it does the exact same thing. A uh, little bit of advantage with the limit switch is if you had a, a little piece of block right at the front of your saw, when you pull the sled back, it can hit that limit switch, make the advancement, and your hands never have to leave the machine. In my particular case, uh, you have to pull the sled quite a ways back in order to make that happen. Uh, at least the way I had it set up, I'm sure there's an easier way and better way, but the, at least the way I had it set up, you had to pull the sled nearly all the way back to the uh, front of the um, table saw to engage that switch. So I think eventually I'll probably just end up putting the switch up here at the top and I can just control it with my thumb. Both hands can stay on the uh, uh, fence here and I never have to really worry about where my hands are. Um, not that your hands really gonna be in the way anyway with this particular jig, but just an extra little safety thing and a convenience thing. Um, but I'd like to thank Jason Roush for designing this from scratch. I know he's been working really hard on this for the last few years anyway. And this was his uh, final release on it. And he actually has these for sale now. And I'll put a link in the description below where you can actually buy these. And um, I would highly recommend getting the uh, additional hardware kit. Uh, just more or less so you don't have to go search for all those other pieces that you may need to put this together. Um, 
other than that it works out good I put a little spin on my sled this sled actually fits in my sled cabinet uh, you don't have to build it like this you can build it a lot smaller you can build it a lot bigger um, but this particular sled will slide right into my sled cabinet and that's why it is this particular size and uh, that's why everything's kind of a low profile uh, it's all uh, one height and that's why the box and everything is mounted to the same board and everything so that's what I did feel free to make it your own um, that's what I did and uh, I'm sure Jason will have some plans of eventually on how to assemble the jig and everything so go check out Jason Roush's channel go check out his website and uh, I'll put a link to everything that you need to know in the description below thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed this i had a lot of fun building this and it's it's fun to bring in some electronics with my woodworking um, my background is actually electronics and uh, woodworking has just become a passion over the last 10 years so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time